Today we're going to talk about some very basic clutch fitment techniques that are super important. If you fail to follow these instructions, then it can cause you a huge amount of headache further down the track once the clutch is fitted and working and it might take you a huge amount of time and effort to actually diagnose what's actually going wrong. The first important thing you want to do is give the bell housing area and spline a very good clean and including the back of the engine. The reason this is important is it gives you the opportunity to inspect both the guide tube, the pivot ball and the spline and the end of the input shaft to make sure there's no excessive wear and tear on those components. If there is any wear and tear on these components, it's very important that you take care of that while the transmission is out. If you fail to do that, it could be causing you some clutch problems in the near future. The next component you're gonna to wanna to look at is the clutch fork to make sure there's no significant wear or hairline cracks anywhere in the fork that could potentially be causing you problems. Anywhere that it makes contact with the release bearing, you wanna make sure that there's no significant wear and tear and no excessive slop on the on the actual bearing or bearing carrier itself. The bearing carrier, if you're reusing it like a Nissan one, like this one, for example, you wanna make sure there's no significant wear on the edges where it can rotate or any wear in the pockets here where the fork actually operates. Each one of our clutch kits comes with a sachet of high temperature grease. The intention of this grease is to lubricate not only the spline, but all of the metal to metal contact points of the release bearing and the fork. The first thing we're gonna do is apply a small amount of grease to the input shaft spline the whole way around. The next thing we're gonna do is apply a similar amount of grease to the inside of the spline on the clutch disc. Then what we're gonna to do to make sure that we get an even spread of grease, we're going to slide the clutch disc onto the input shaft in multiple orientations to make sure that the grease is evenly applied. Next and just as important, we're going to wipe the spline on the end here of the clutch disc and make sure that we get rid of any build up there. And we're gonna make sure we do the exact same on the end of the input shaft over here. That'll stop the grease spraying out all over the friction material and causing you a shutter problem. The next part is we're going to apply some grease onto the inside of the release bearing carrier like this. We're also going to apply some grease onto the inner parts of where the fork will centralize and where it will actually operate on the ears. That's super critical because if you do not do that point there, then it's likely you can end up with a squeak from the clutch fork or from the release bearing as the engine is running after a few thousand kilometers. Next points we're going to lubricate are the inner pivot ball here on the clutch fork. And then we'll lubricate the same points on the clutch fork where it's gonna to touch the release bearing carrier. And then finally, we're also going to lubricate where the push rod's actually gonna operate here. If any of these points are dry, you might end up with squeaking as you're operating the clutch pedal, which is what you don't want. Final step in lubrication process is to make sure that we lubricate the entire guide tube. Depending on whether it's running a bearing or a bush, it's also a very good idea to apply a small amount of grease to the end of the input shaft where it spigots into the back of the crank. And then lastly, we wanna apply just a little bit more to the pivot ball as well, just so we got both points lubricated. Once the fork and the bearing are installed back on the transmission, it's important to cycle it back and forth and make sure that it doesn't jump around or step as it moves. Now that your checking and lubrication procedure is complete, you can carefully install the friction disc under the pressure plate, align it, and carefully install the transmission and go for a test drive. 